Uh, so what I'm going to be discussing today is two different philosophies, two different approaches to architecture. Uh, first, the idea of, of its time, uh, the idea that we should forget all established architecture, forget all the lessons we've learned from the past, and root our architecture firmly in the moment. <clears throat> so buildings built in 2015 should reflect 2015, not some kind of previous era. Uh, the other philosophy is timeless architecture, where uh, we learn from the past, we kind of bring forward the forms and, and ideas that we've used in the past <coughs> uh, to develop an architecture for the 21st century. Um, so both have an interesting relationship to time, uh, where of its time, again, is rooted very firmly in the moment, and timeless has a much more fluid approach to architecture, where um, it's not so specifically um, geared to one moment in time. Uh, before I um, move on, I wanted to define one term for you, and this is zeitgeist, and this is a very important uh, term in contemporary architecture. Uh, it's a German word that I'm going to be using throughout the presentation, and what it means is spirit of the age. And basically, uh, contemporary architecture believes that uh, all of our architecture from here going, on for going forward uh, should represent our time, the 21st century, uh, be of its time, and not look back on any previous eras of architecture. Um, so an important word to uh, keep in mind. Uh, before I go any further, I wanted to give you a little quiz. And you don't uh, have to write anything down or shout out any answers, but just think about this. Um, I'm going to show you two buildings and ask you which one was built first or which one is older. Uh, so here is building number one. Give you a moment to take a look at that. And then here is building number two. So once again, quickly, building number one. Uh, building number two. So again, the question is, which one was built first? Um, <clears throat> so here's the answer to the first one, uh, 2004. This is the Stata Center at MIT, uh, designed by Frank Geary. And I think you can understand that it's certainly a 21st century building uh, with its protruding windows and, and metallic materials and uh, kind of fractured uh, forms. We couldn't have built this way in, in the 18th or 19th century, for example. Uh, so something very much of its time, of the early 21st century. Uh, the answer to the second one might surprise you a little bit. Uh, this is uh, 2006, uh, so even later than the Stata Center. This is the Schermerhorn Symphony Center in Nashville, designed by David Schwartz. And it um, demonstrates the idea of timelessness in architecture, this idea that uh, the forms and ideas that have worked for us throughout history uh, can be updated and moved into the uh, 21st century. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just go through uh, a couple more pairs of buildings and talk about um, the idea of of its time versus timeless. Uh, and one of, th one of the downfalls, I think, of uh, building for, its t for our time uh, is uh, kind of losing the legibility of buildings, losing the uh, readily identifiable elements in buildings that uh, kind of give us an idea of uh, where we are, where we're going, where we've been, and, and uh, even as uh, practical as what the building is. Um, so this is a very uh, recent building. It might just have been completed within the last six months or so. Uh, and I'll, again, I'll just ask you, you don't have to shout it out or anything, but what is this building? What is it used for? Where is it? You know, can you tell anything about this building uh, just by looking at its picture? Uh, so again, another example of a building of its time. And I'll contrast that uh, with this building. And this is a very recent building as well, within the last two or three years. And I think uh, just by looking at the scale, the materials, the design, uh, you can start to infer uh, something about this building. Uh, it's not a house, it's not a restaurant, it's probably not offices. It feels civic, it feels important, uh, it feels like a city hall or something like that. Uh, in fact, both of these buildings are brand new federal courthouses. Uh, this one is in Salt Lake City, uh, and this one is in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So again, two different ideas of uh, where architecture should be going um, at this moment in time. Uh, one of the other downfalls, I think, of pursuing the zeitgeist is uh, who exactly determines what the zeitgeist is? Who can tell us uh, what embodies 2015? I suspect if I talked to each one of you, you'd each have a different idea of what exactly 2015 is. Uh, and trust me, if we leave this decision up to the architects, we're all in very, very big trouble. Um, <laughs> this is uh, a relatively recent building, the Cooper Union School of Architecture in Lower Manhattan. Uh, obviously, a uh, 21st century building very much of its time, uh, very fractured, very um, oddly shaped, uh, using new materials, new technology, very much breaking from the past. 
Uh, so contrast that uh, with this proposal. This is an unbuilt uh, building, but this is a proposal by a local Charleston firm, Beaven and Liberados, uh, for the new Clemson School of Architecture in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, a building uh, that fits very, very well into Charleston, and again, has that timeless quality that um, kind of gives us pause. We don't know if this is an existing historic building from 1800 or if this is a new building. You know, when has when this building been built? Uh, so again, that <coughs> uh, very specific relationship with time uh, is much different with buildings of their time or timeless buildings. <coughs> and of course, we cannot escape uh, the idea of fashion. Uh, looking back on this uh, prom picture from the early 1970s, uh, these people probably thought that they were on the very, very cutting edge of fashion, uh, which unfortunately they probably were uh, in the 1970s. <coughs> uh, but we look back on this picture and say, Mom, Dad, what on earth were you thinking? Why were you wearing uh, such a strange costume? Uh, it's the same in architecture. Uh, this is the uh, Boston Architectural College where I taught for several years in Boston uh, from 1966, uh, a competition winner. Uh, very, very evocative of architecture from the early 1960s, and I can't tell you how many times I've brought new people to Boston and shown them this building, and they said, that's the architecture school? Are you kidding me? What an awful building. Um, <clears throat> so again, this idea of, of building uh, for the moment, uh, being on the cutting edge when that moment fades, uh, uh, you know, what are you left with? Contrast that with uh, a more classic look, uh, gentlemen, I don't think any of us would be uh, ashamed to wear this outfit to our next formal function. Um, and again, this is the idea of timelessness, the idea that uh, what's appropriate uh, yesterday is still appropriate today and will be appropriate uh, again in the future. <coughs> uh, and here is a new building, again, that embodies that timelessness. Uh, this is the Galliard, uh, Galliard Performing Arts Center in Charleston, South Carolina. And what's interesting about this one particular building uh, is that this is not a new building. This is a renovation. Uh, here's what the original building looks like. Uh, this it was built in 1968. Again, very, very evocative uh, of its time. You would guess probably that this was a 60s, 70s kind of uh, building. And now it is being wrapped uh, in a new facade to look like this. And preservationists and architects are up in arms over this building uh, because they say uh, this, this uh, new classical facade is kind of stripping away its relationship to time, and you can't tell anymore when it was built. Exactly the point. <laughs> um, but the other point is that um, looking at the exterior appearance of a building is only one way to tell a building's age. I'm sure we've all heard the adage, don't judge a book by its cover. Um, this building, the Galliard, for example, um, <clears throat> is going to have the latest in uh, HVAC and plumbing and internet access and uh, all sorts of systems and acoustics and, and everything that, that marks it as an early 21st century building. Uh, so just because it builds on lessons from the past to create a timeless exterior, uh, don't think that, that, that this building is not of its time, again, simply because of its exterior appearance. Uh, and the last issue I wanted to touch on is one that uh, us, uh, those of us in the architecture field are kind of afraid to talk about, uh, and that's beauty. Uh, Henry Hope Reed uh, reminds us in the Golden City that beauty is the number one goal of architecture. Architecture should beautify the city and make our lives richer and better uh, uh, for, its, you know, for its appearance. And certainly, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and I see some of the horrified looks on your faces as you look at this slide. Uh, this is uh, Simmons Hall at MIT, uh, a building that's oh, probably eight or ten years old at this point. And uh, you know, even though we may have differing standards of beauty, uh, I think many of us would have trouble arguing that this is a beautiful building. <clears throat> so why should we ignore uh, all of the uh, buildings that have come before us that have provided us with beautiful cities and beautiful places uh, uh, and try and break from the past and uh, create this new of its time architecture? Uh, contrast this building at MIT with the architecture school uh, building at MIT, a uh, building from the early 20th century, but again, uh, a building that you don't know exactly when it was built by looking at it. It could be 1780, it could be 1922, it could be 2014. So, <clears throat> uh, in conclusion, uh, I would argue that uh, we should continue to learn from the past, to continue to update our architecture, uh, to certainly incorporate new technology and new ideas and, and experimentation and try different things, 
uh, but continue to learn from the past and update traditional architecture with uh, new technology and new ideas to create uh, a timeless architecture for the 21st century. Thank you very much.